Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2019 GMC Sierra 3500, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Airlift Load Lifter 7500 XL uh, airbags for the rear axle. But before we do that, why don't we check them out and make sure that these are going to be right for you. So what we like to do uh, to test the airbags is run them through a course and everything else. But um, before we do that, I like to just take some measurements that way, you know, we kind of have some baseline numbers that we can work off of and uh, just to help kind of give us a little more information. So right now the truck is unloaded with the factory suspension. So this is going to be the original ride height, if you will. And if you go at the front here, measure from the ground to the inside edge of our wheel well there, we're going to be right at, looks like, about 39 and a half inches. And at the back, from the ground to the edge there, that's gonna be about 42 and a half. Now that we have those measurements, what we're gonna do is put some weight in the bed of the truck and uh, take those measurements again. That way we can kind of see how that weight will affect our suspension. So I got that weight added. It's about 180 gallons of water, give or take. And the effect of the truck a little bit here, at the front, now we're sitting right at 39 and three quarters of an inch. And here at the back, take that same measurement, and right now we're right at 40 and a half inches. So, you know, the weight did make the truck kind of squat down a little bit in the back and raise it up in the front. Not a ton, which was kind of expected. You know, this is a really heavy duty truck, so not a ton of weight, but that's kind of the point. You know, it's just to kind of give you a visual on you know, how even a, a little bit of weight for a truck like this is going to affect it, you know? So you can imagine if, if uh, the weight was doubled, tripled, or, or even more, you had a huge trailer back here, you know, how these, um, how this would be amplified. And what's gonna happen whenever your truck's riding like this, you know, um, it's gonna put extra strain on your suspension. And, you know, it's just gonna affect your overall uh, driving experience you know you're, you're really gonna feel that weight I'm sure many of you have before and um, you know you just have to slow down a little bit and really stay uh, a lot more focused and everything else when you're driving so hopefully you know these airbags are going to uh, alleviate some of those issues but measurements and all that's one thing but how the truck is actually gonna perform whenever we're driving it around is a whole different story um, hopefully we have enough weight back here to really kind of get things going. I think we, uh, I think we should, but with that said, why don't we go out on our test course, um, and see how it does. So up in our truck here, we'll just run through our, uh, our test course and we're going to do a couple of things. First thing we're going to do is hit some bumps and I like to kind of go over the first few, kind of trying to get that weight transferring through our truck and honestly not too bad um, this truck rides pretty stiff pretty firm so kind of expected that um, but you know I can I can still feel that there's weight back there you know what I mean if that makes sense so I'm just trying to imagine if you know this weight was was increased fivefold or something like that so a little bit of movement now and, and how I feel the suspension kind of coming down and a little slower to rebound, you know, it's only going to be exaggerated with that much more weight. So that's really what I'm trying to kind of ba base my opinion off of. But as of right now with this little bit of weight, you know, it, it's, it's really not too terrible. So what we're gonna do now is kind of do some slalom, some evasive maneuvering, and I'm really curious to see how it goes here because, you know, usually with the water, and the bed of the truck like that it kind of gets to sloshing and you know you can actually feel some uh you can feel it pretty good so i'm going to pick up some speed and you can there's definitely some body roll there that weight is affecting it and you know usually from my past experience this is where the airbags kind of really shine and i feel like that's probably the most important this turning like that doing those wide turns are are gonna be kind of your most real world type uh, type situation. So uh, I definitely felt it there. And with the, uh, when we put the airbags on, I'm curious to see if there's an improvement. 
So now that we have the airbags installed on our truck, uh, I went ahead and put that same amount of weight in the bed and we'll grab our measurements again. So here at the front, we're gonna be right at 39 and a half inches. And here at the back, grab our measurement again from the ground to the edge. Looks like we're gonna be right at about 41 and three quarters. So it is down a little bit from the uh, factory ride height, but I only got about 12, 13 pounds of air in the bag. So if we put another couple pounds in there, we can bring it up to that original ride height. So now that we got those measurements, we can see how the, the weight affects it and how the bags can correct it. Again, what's really gonna matter is how it's gonna feel. So we're gonna hop up in the truck and go out uh, for a spin again. All right, so we're gonna do the same exact thing as last time here. We're gonna go over our bumps first. And again, I'll try to get some, uh, some movement going through the truck's suspension system here. And actually, believe it or not, I can tell a little bit of a difference. It, you know, the suspension really doesn't feel any different how it's like reacting but it is a little bit smoother, you know, it's not as uh, not as violent, I guess you could say. You know, I, could, I feel like, it's kind of hard to explain, but I feel like that airbag is just kind of almost acting as like a cushion and just kind of dampening everything. So, um, although I really don't feel it in the suspension per se, uh, I definitely feel an improvement in the overall comfort of it. So how, you know, how comfortable you're gonna be going over that bump when you're, when you're towing that trailer. So we're going to come up through here, get through this uh, little clearing and uh, do some evasive maneuvering again. And I'm curious here how this is, uh, how these bags are going to affect this particular truck. In the past, I've noticed uh, they really help during this test here and really get cut and hard. And the same holds true for this particular vehicle. Uh, the body roll, you know, it really just isn't, isn't there. You know, the truck feels like it's planted a little bit more and um, is going where you point it, you know, and, and that's good. So, uh, you know, I don't have a ton of space back here. I really can't get up to really high speeds, but I feel like, you know, if, if I was going down the road, a little bit higher speed limits and I needed to do that, uh, I would have a little extra confidence, you know, a little more control if I did need to make a maneuver like that. So now that we, uh, you know, hit our test course and seen and uh, felt how the airbags uh, uh, do underneath the truck here, let's take a look at them. So this is what they're going to look like installed. And essentially they're just going to take place of your factory Johns bumper. So they're going to fill that void in between the bottom of your frame rail and your axle and they're going to act as a big as a big cushion more or less um, and that's what's going to help you know give us that comfortable ride and uh, help you know take some of that uh, work off of our suspension components with these being the 7500s or seven inches round so these are the big dogs here and um, they're going to do a, a good job of being able to handle a lot of weight so you know, you, you carry around a big old trailer or whatever, you know, you can, uh, you can rely on these things. So one of the cool things about airbags is the fact that they are adjustable. All right, so you can um, more or less inflate them or deflate them to the proper amount, which is best for your particular application. So let's say, you know, one day if you're hauling a big old horse trailer or something like that, you need a little more pressure in them you can adjust them then the next day let's say if you're hauling something a little bit lighter a small boat or you know whatever the case may be um, you're able to make those adjustments kind of on the fly and that's kind of the advantage an airbag has over some of the other suspension enhancements uh, like a let's say a timberin for example which a timberin more or less it's going to uh, take place of the johns bumper here but it's going to fill that whole void and provide the support that way um, you know, that's kind of the downside to it though. You kind of get what you get with the Temerin. With the airbag, you have that adjustability. But if you're someone who just pulls one trailer, Temerin might be a better choice for you. And, uh, cause you don't really need that adjustability. 
But I also set it too because with a timber end or something similar, they don't really require any maintenance. You get them on and you're done. With an airbag, it is something you're gonna to have to kind of think about from time to time. You know, these are gonna have a minimum air pressure of five PSI. So you are gonna to have to keep at least that in there um, or else, you know, you can damage an airbag and really start to tear things up. Um, and, you know, if, especially if you live in a place where the weather changes a lot, you know, it's hot in the day, cold in the night, just something you're gonna to have to, to kind of deal with. Something to make that easier though, and make adjustments on the fly and everything else, is you can use a, a compressor system. And what that's gonna do is allow you to make those, those pressure changes from inside the cab of your truck. And even a lot of them now are wireless and they're really cool. And you can kind of set presets to where it'll automatically kind of maintenance your bags for you. Um, the one that we've had a lot of luck with, uh, I actually get a lot of our customers uh, that come into the shop here to switch over to these compressor kits because we've had that good of luck is the airlift the um, easy mount type compressors really reliable uh, wireless and they just seem to do a great job something that is pretty cool with this kit is you know you have some some options as far as where you want to mount up your fittings pretty much anywhere you can get them i mean you can you can hook them up uh, i'm a big fan of doing it here replacing the bolts on your license plate because you know, you kind of get two for one. It's a really clean look. They're easy to get to. And uh, you're, you're really not having to drill any holes or anything crazy like that. But like I said, you know, if you're, uh, you don't want to mess with that, you can also pick up brackets and, and a bunch of different things are available to where you can kind of mount it up to your hitch and put your fittings there as well. So at the end of the day, do I think airbags are worth it on a truck like this? And the answer is it just really depends you know if you're someone that is going to be doing a lot of towing a lot of different trailers and things like that then absolutely definitely worthwhile you know being able to uh, have all that adjustability and just being able to ride a little bit more comfortable you know chances are pretty good if you're if you're towing some big trailers you're probably going you know quite a you know quite a few miles and you know, make the ride comfortable um, and, and be able to uh, enjoy yourself a little bit. You know, again, if I were to get airbags for my own personal truck, um, I definitely would really consider pairing them up with that compressor. It just makes life so much easier, you know, and safer, not to mention, you know, you're not having to constantly keep an eye on, uh, keep an eye on your bags. But, you know, um, when it comes to these airlifts, we've had a lot of good luck with them. And uh, if you end up going with them, you should too. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our truck. I went ahead and just temporarily removed our spare tire. That way it gives us some more room to work. And then we're gonna remove this shield here too. Uh, and that just kind of gives us a lot more space. So with this, it's held in place by two 13 millimeter head bolts. Go ahead and get those pulled out. Now what we need to do is remove our factory Johns bumper and so it helps if you spray these down with some type of lubricant or soapy water. You take a big pry bar or even a big screwdriver and we're going to pry these out. So sometimes these, these can be kind of tricky on, you know, just trying to get a good, good angle on it. So essentially they're just going to pop right out and we can get these uh, set off to the side as we won't be reusing them. So now if you look over here on the driver's side on our frame rail, just in front of our John's bumper uh, cup, there's this bolt here that's holding on the e-brake cable. It's like a little bracket. We're going to um, get that removed off the frame. So just take this uh, 13 millimeter socket and pull this bolt out. And if we look uh, just in front of our shock here on our rear axle, there's going to be a bracket holding on our brake line. We're going to remove that as well, again with a 13 millimeter socket. Now we can start to uh, assemble our airbags. So 
One side of the bag is going to have three fittings, threaded fittings. The other side is going to have two. We're going to be working on the side here with three. What you're going to do is take your uh, roll plate here, set it on top of the bag, and this hole here, we're going to take our air fitting and thread that in. And what we're looking to do is get it hand tight. And then we'll come back with a half inch wrench and tighten it a turn and a half. So there's half a turn, one turn, and about another half there. So once our fitting's on, you want to make sure that the roll plate lines up with those holes. Then we can grab our upper bracket. Now these are side specific, so uh, check your instructions, make sure you get the right one. But this is going to set on top of our bag, and we'll get all the holes lined up. Then we're going to take these uh, Allen key bolts, or Allen head bolts, I have a beveled edge on them. And I like to get both of them started by hand here. Get both of them hand tight. And we'll come back with a torque wrench and tighten them down to the amount specified in the instructions. From this point on, anything we do torque, you can find that spec in your instructions. And if you don't have a torque wrench, you can grab one here at E-Trailer or go to your local auto parts stores and rent one from them. Now we can get our lower bracket set up. To figure out which holes to use, all you're going to have to do is set it up uh, in, in the position you know, that we're going to have it in. So for example, this is a, the driver's side or the left side. And so we have it angled. The instructions give you some pictures and stuff to give you a visual, kind of something to follow. But you're going to use the first and third hole. So this one and this one. And I just kind of marked them on both sides there with a marker that way you know, I don't get them mixed up or anything. But with that said, we flip our bag over here. We got those two holes. And I want to pay attention to what side our fitting is on. So the fitting's on the side closest to us. We're going to take this bracket and we want the angled side to be on the same side as our fitting. So we want it to set like this. So again, just like the top one, we will line those up. Before we actually put that on there though, which I almost forgot, I want to make sure to take the roll plate, the other roll plate, and set that up there too. Go ahead and get that positioned. And do the same thing. Just get them started, and then we can come back and torque them. Now we can actually get our airbag assembly uh, in place. And so this is gonna sit above our rear axle and where our Johns Pumper cup uh, is. Now what you wanna do is you want to increase the distance here. That way our airbag can go into place easier. So since I'm gonna drive on lift, I just took a, uh, a pole jack here and, and jacked up the frame of our vehicle. That way it'll increase this distance. If you're at home, um, what you could do is simply um, take a jack and a jack stand and jack your truck up by the frame. And what that's going to do is allow the wheel to drop down and give you that distance there. Just when you do that, you know, obviously make sure you take all the uh, proper safety precautions. With that said, this is going to fit in here, around here and you want the air fitting to face towards the inside of the truck. So this might take you a couple shots here just trying to find a good spot. All these wires and stuff I did kind of zip tie together loosely just to kind of keep them out of the way. There's a little more room to work, you know. And this one actually dropped into place uh, with relative ease. So with this sitting flat, you know, against this uh, 
piece here on our rear axle. The bottom portion here, we're going to take these carriage bolts, drop them on down. Same deal over on the other side, you know, set up the same way. We're going to take this uh, uh, strap bracket here. Obviously, you want the beveled edge to face up towards the bottom of our axle housing. It's going to slide up on the carriage bolts. Then you're just going to take a flat washer, nylon lock nut, and we're just going to get these started for now. Just get them hand tight. Now we can secure our top bracket to the bottom of the frame. So there's a couple of ways you can do this and it's really just going to depend on your truck. So if you do not have a uh, fifth wheel type hitch installed in your truck, so if, if your side of your frame here doesn't have any bracketry or anything, then what you can do is use this U-bolt. This U-bolt's going to kind of wrap around your frame and come through these two holes and uh, use the hardware to secure it. And you know you can you check your instructions for a little more thorough uh, explanation of that. But with that said, our truck does have a hitch, so we need to go uh, do the second option. And what that's going to entail, as you can see, there's going to be three holes here. We're going to be using this hole in the middle. And what you want to do is let the truck back down some to get some pressure on the bag and get these brackets pretty much flat up against the frame. Make sure that hole and the one on the other side of the bag, bracket rather, is centered up with the frame. And then we're gonna take a drill bit and, and drill a pilot hole. And we're gonna have some self-tapping hardware that's included that we're gonna use to secure it. So with all that said, I'll go ahead, grab my drill bit and get this, uh, get this drilled out now. You will have to kind of go at an angle, just kind of the nature of it with the bag being in the way and everything. I do want to point out, make sure you know your drill when this is spinning isn't rubbing up against your bag or anything like that. You know, that way you don't wear a, a weak spot in it. Once you have that hole drilled, you can take one of the included bolts here, the self-tapping bolts. And what I like to do is just kind of get a few threads started on it, hand tight. That way it'll kind of prevent this from moving around while we're drilling out the other side. So I got the other hole drilled out and got that bolt in hand tight. And now we can come back with a socket and tighten these up. Uh, just kind of a heads up, if you have an impact driver like this, that's fine. I probably want to use a huge one, um, but with that said, these are going to be pretty tight, so expect to kind of get them started and then probably have to come back and finish them by hand, so just kind of a heads up. So once you have both sides snug, make sure you come back and torque them down. So I went ahead and resecured our uh, e-brake cable to the top mounting bracket on our airbag over here on the driver's side. Um, originally, they want you to just use the existing threads left on the bottom of the U-bolt to put this clamp around and, and, a, and a, a nut there to get that included clamp secured. Well, issue is we didn't need to use the U-bolt since we have a fifth wheel hitch on our truck. So. I kind of improvised and I used their clamp, but then I just took a nut and a bolt, dropped that nut and a bolt through, through the clamp and tightened it down. So it still holds our cable up out of the way and gets the job done. Now we can tighten up uh, this lower bracket here. So really nothing too crazy. Uh, we just want to make sure it's straight. So center it up best you can. Take a 9 16 and snug these down. When you're tightening these type of bolts, 
Uh, you want to make sure to kind of draw them up evenly. So just kind of alternate from side to side. And we'll kind of get it where we want it. Get it snug. And then don't forget to come back with the torque wrench and torque them down. Now we can take this here bracket and it's going to line up with that hole there and this one here. But I noticed with these, before you try to get them going, this one's really not too bad, but some of the other ones are really tight. Take the included uh, bolt and washer and uh, just kind of make sure it goes in there. Sometimes that paint can get hung up and make it a little tricky. So you just want to make sure it gets started. Like I said, this one isn't that bad because it's pretty open, but some of the other ones are pretty tight. So that's getting started. Just going to take that and you know, wind on up. Take our bolt and our flat washer. Get her going and come back with a 13 millimeter and snug it down. Now we can start to get our airline ran. So you're going to get a big bundle of this. Each end is going to have on this uh, brass shredder valve, this air fitting. And you can, I already cut this one in half, but take those two ends and, you know, find the center of that airline and cut it in half. When you cut this airline, you want to make sure that the end is nice and clean, straight, you know, you don't want any you know, burrs or anything like that on it. So you want to use a tool like this, or there's even um, a, a tubing cutter that you could use. You just want to avoid using a regular pair of snips because a lot of times you use that, it'll kind of pinch it and uh, potentially create a leak. So go ahead and clean that end up, inspect it, and that's a good example of how it should look. So the fresh cut end of our airline is going to get plugged into the fitting there in our bag. These are quick connect fittings, so all you're going to have to do is line it up and push it in. You'll feel it kind of snap into place, you know. And uh, now what we can do is route our airline to the back of our truck. So I'll go ahead and do that now and show you the path that I took to get there. So I got our uh, tubing routed. I simply just looped it around, push it inside of our frame rail. When you're doing this, you know, be sure to avoid any hot or moving parts. But that tube is going to run through the inside of our frame. And here's where it comes out. Now what we're going to do to mount up our fittings, we're actually going to use the holes there uh, that we would use to secure our license plate on. And, and this is essentially just going to take place of the bolt securing our license plate. So from the back side here that you may have like a little plastic deal in there, you can pop that on out. And then you can take your fitting, you're going to put on one of the hex nuts and a star washer. I'll go ahead and just get this pushed through. Then we can come out to the outside of our truck and get the rest of our hardware on it. So here at our license plate, here's where that uh, comes through. You know, depending on your state or what type of plate you have, you may have to kind of open the holes up a little bit on the plate, just kind of a heads up, but not really a big deal. When it's through though, you're gonna take one of these rubber washers, push that over, file that up with a flat washer, and finally a hex nut. So with the driver's side done, you're going to repeat that same exact process over here on the passenger side. Get this airbag installed. So same deal. Uh, the airline over here though, since we got the exhaust, they give you a, a, a sleeve you can put over that airline. It just slides over to help protect it from the heat there. And as far as getting this one routed, I just kind of bent it up. And again, essentially the same exact deal as the other side. Just uh, brought it through our frame rail. 
out the frame and through our plate. On the passenger side, we are gonna to have to install this heat shield as well. So I kind of just bent it, you know, uh, similar fashion as our uh, tailpipe. I take these two worm gear clamps, get them loosely on, and see what works best here. I think I can kind of work this in on both sides. And just kind of position it the best we can. This is just gonna help protect that airbag from excessive heat. But we'll get it in place and then tighten these down. So once you have this thing uh, secured, you know this is how it's gonna look. Now what we can do is inflate our bags. That way we can uh, make sure everything clears and that we don't have any leaks. I'm gonna put about 50 pounds in each bag. That'll be good enough. That'll be a good solid number to, uh, you know, go off of and check everything. So to check for leaks, you know, there's a couple of, a couple of ways here. You know, try to keep everything nice and quiet and obviously you can listen for any leaks. And then uh, another way is to take some soapy water and just spray it over everything, you know, on all your connection points. Um, and what you're looking for is for bubbles to uh, rapidly form, you know, consistently forming. And if that happens, that indicates we have a leak. What you can do to fix that, take the air out of the system, unplug your line where the leak is, uh, recut it, plug it back in, fill it up and check it again until you verify that you have no leak. But this one looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of our connection points to make sure that uh, we're solid. Then once you verify you don't have any leaks, you can reinstall the shield here and put your spare tire back up. I just wanna mention, uh, we're gonna leave ours off for now just for video purposes so you can actually see what's gonna happen. Uh, you know, when we're out on the test course, actually testing our airbags. But with all that said, that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Airlift Load Lifter 7500 XL airbags on our 2019 GMC Sierra 3500.